Welcome to our video on Haskell's powerful data structures. Today, we're tackling a question that many newcomers to the Haskell community often ask. Our viewer is curious about practical examples of using the DMAP type from the Data Dependent Map Library. They mentioned that while the package documentation is thorough, it can be quite overwhelming for those just starting out. So let's break it down and explore some real world applications of DMAP together. Welcome back to another technical video. Today, I'll be going through your question, answering it, and hopefully finding that solution you're looking for. Guys, let's get ready to try and work through to that resolution, and remember to just stay a little bit crazy, just like me. Now, let's continue on. Let's begin by understanding what a DMAP is. DMAP, or dependent map, is a type that associates keys with values in a way that the type of the value can depend on the key. This allows for more type-safe programming in Haskell. To use DMAP, you first need to import the necessary module. You can do this by adding the following line to your Haskell file. Next, let's create a simple example. We'll define a DMAP that associates different types of values with their corresponding keys. For instance, we can use a string as a key and an integer as a value. Now that we have our DMAP, we can access the values using the keys. This is done using the lookup function, which retrieves the value associated with a given key. Finally, remember that DMAP is particularly useful in scenarios where you need to maintain type safety across different types of values. This can be especially beneficial in larger applications. Let's now look at a user-suggested answer. In this example, we see how to implement GEQ and GCompare instances for a generalized algebraic data type, or JDT. The data type foo can hold either an integer or a string. Next, we derive the GEQ and GCompare instances for foo, allowing us to create a dependent map. This map, DMAP1, associates anit with the value 1 and a string with bar. Finally, in the main function, we can retrieve and print the values associated with anint and a string from DMAP1. And that's it guys. We've gone through, answered your questions, and hopefully found that solution you're looking for. If we did, please hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, I hope you have a good one. Bye.